Well, basically, this is a Pierce 10 ton dump unit which we've installed on a retired military vehicle. It's going to see some pretty rough service. And I will note that some of the things you'll see on this unit are options that the customer requested uh, that, that we add during the installation. The first thing we did was take a good look at the bed, look at the type of overhang we're going to have on the back, or is there going to be any infer interference with uh, equipment that's attached to the truck frame. And on this particular application there was, we did remove and lower some uh, hardware on the back of the truck. Right in this area, uh, if you notice, these trucks have heavy duty bumpers and tow hooks on the back which were up in this area and it was going to interfere with the truck bed so those had to be removed and we did reinstall them in a lower position but uh, if you didn't want to put them back on that would be your option. But that's one thing you have to look at. Where the hinges are going to be placed on the truck frame, how much overhang do you have, is there going to be interference. And another very important factor is distance from the center of the hinge pin to the center of the scissor assembly pin. This distance you'll find in the, in the description uh, of capacities in our owner's manual. These are uh, all controlled by the geometry that's involved in the triangles that you see here. The farther back you slide the unit, the higher lift you're going to get. The farther forward, less lift, but it has a higher capacity. The capacity increases as the unit is moved forward towards the cab of the truck. This particular bed is 12 foot long. We were very limited on where the scissor assembly could go because of the construction of the frame. Uh, it pretty much had to go in that area. We were well within the limits of the graph showing distances from the center of the pin to the center of the pin. We didn't do any welding to the truck frame except on the back where I noted the hinges were installed. Uh, those are welded on. The kit comes with bolts and bolt holes in the brackets for a bolt on application, but we do weld on the back of a truck frame. When we're working anywhere forward of that, or forward of the rear spring hangers if it has it, we don't do any welding on the truck. Everything's bolted. We do weld our brackets together after we get it bolted. This cross member comes extra long. Trim it to length after you get it set on there and determine what kind of width you're going to need. These are guide plates. This particular truck has two in the front. At customer's request, the kit comes with one set. You can install those anywhere you want to in the front portion of the bed. If you're in an odd position and the truck has a little bit of torque in the frame or the body as the bed comes down, that guides it back into position. This particular unit, we mounted the pump underneath the front seat. You can see here, the tank's all is visible. This particular application, there was no room outside the cab to, to mount the pump, and a 10-ton unit takes a rather large reservoir and we were a little bit limited on room and that was the best position for it. It's out of the weather and uh, the customer liked that installation also. A few things that I'll note that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, are in addition to the standard kit, are latches that latch the bed down. A uh, customer requested that due to the severity of the operation, the, the conditions the truck will be operated in. He wanted three sets of guide plates. We have one in the front, one in the middle, and we put an inverted set at the rear of the truck. And it's right here. One thing that each customer that installs these should really think about doing is, is putting a safety prop uh, underneath the bed. We have one on each side on this truck at the customer's request. They're just there for safety in case you should ever need to work on the unit. Uh, put those up. You don't necessarily have to lower the bed onto it, but if you were going to disconnect any hydraulics, it would be very important that you'd have a support to hold the bed up, take the weight of the bed off the hydraulic unit, which would relieve the pressure off the hydraulic lines. Uh, also, as in this particular application, this is a six-wheel drive truck and there's a lot of mechanical parts underneath the chassis that need to be worked on and it's much easier to work on from the top. In that instance, he can prop the bed up, put safeties up on each side, and feel safe at working underneath the bed. The kit comes with a standard uh, electrical toggle switch. can be mounted anywhere in the dash. It 
can actually be hidden uh, if you want it to. We recommend using a power source. Uh, in most instances, that it's controlled off the ignition switch for safety. We've installed this one where we push the button down, the bed comes down. Pull it up, the bed goes up. <laughs>